are the concerns about LDL cholesterol elevations valid or warranted on a low carb ketogenic style diet? We're going to talk more about the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype and talk about this case report that was published in Frontiers of Endocrinology titled Case Report Hypercholesterolemia Lean Mass Hyperresponder Phenotype Presents in the Context of a Low Saturated Fat Carbohydrate Restricted Diet. So, what is this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype? So, it's an increase in LDL cholesterol an increase in HDL cholesterol, and a decrease in triglycerides. Now, this is quite common in people who are on a low-carb or zero-carb diet, whether it's carnivore, keto, or some combination therein, who are also very lean. I see this quite common in my physically active individuals who I work with who are on a zero-carb diet. And so the cut points that you need to know about uh, is an LDL cholesterol over 200 milligrams per deciliter, an HDL cholesterol over 80 milligrams per deciliter, and triglycerides under 70 milligrams per deciliter. Now, this unique phenotype and these cut points are very rare in the general population. I Many people who are eating McDonald's and drinking soda pop are usually not going to have these specific cut points. And Dave Feldman has talked a lot about this. And this is why this sort of phenotype is characterized as this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype because in individuals who are consuming a carbohydrate restricted diet, they're mobilizing more fats for fuel in the form of ketones and the lipolysis of stored fat from adipose tissue that can be uh, you know, sort of shuttled around in the body in these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins and LDL cholesterol. And so it's important to recognize that the increase in LDL cholesterol in these individuals has not been shown to increase coronary artery calcification. And that's what this paper is really diving into. And associated papers that we're going to talk about today, including a new paper finding that there's an association and reduced prevalence of coronary uh, artery calcification in people who have high levels of urinary ketones. And it turns out that perhaps ketones are offer offering some cardiovascular protective benefit. And so I, I do want to share this information because many doctors are still bought into the outdated diet heart hypothesis model, which posits that people that consume saturated fat in the diet, it's going to increase their blood lipids and that is going to increase atherosclerosis. But we know there's a lot of nuance here, particularly in the absence of hypertriglyceridemia, that is having low triglycerides. In the context of high LDL cholesterol, there's not a strong correlation with increased risk for atherosclerosis, even in the absence of high HDL elevations. But as this case report talks about, that particular phenotype, having high LDL cholesterol with high HDL cholesterol and concurrently low uh, triglycerides is cardioprotective. In fact, in this particular case study, and we're going to talk more about how this individual did a CCTA. This is a coronary computed tomography angiogram that is looking at soft and hard calcification of the coronary arteries. This was absent, despite the fact that this individual had a exceedingly high LDL cholesterol level, but looking at the LDL subfractions, looking at the small dense LDL compared to the big fluffy LDLs, the LDL stayed big and fluffy, which means that most of these lipoproteins are shuttling around triglycerides and free fatty acids in, and mobilizing energy for fuel. And I think that's what's important to recognize. And there's a lot of individuals uh, out here who, who are eating a low-carb diet and have this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype. And Dave Feldman has, has done an incredible job talking about this. And he's actually publishing data now and, and looking at hundreds of people looking at their CCTAs and finding that even and despite the fact that these people have high LDL cholesterol elevations, they are not having exceedingly high coronary calcium uh, scores via CT scanning, which I think is important to recognize. So we're going to uh, continue to dive into this, but always, friends, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend. And because we're talking about metabolic health, one tool that you may want to consider to improve your intermittent fasting protocols and avoid eating some of the hyperpalatable foods, you know, the cookies, the crackers, the ice cream at night that really can derail your metabolic health progress and your fasting program is the berberine fasting accelerator by myoscience what's unique about that is it has an appetite suppressant type effect and it, it can help increase your levels of ketones in your fasting window there's a lot of great reviews over at myoscience.com that's m-y-o-x-c-i-e-n-c.com you can take two to three capsules of this berberine fasting accelerator to kick off your fast usually that's in the evening for people or in the morning and you might find uh, improvements in your metabolic health by testing either your glucose or ketones it's important to recognize that we can't uh, talk about preventing, curing, treating, or diagnosing diseases in these videos when it comes to product. This is a tool that can help support metabolic health. You can see what other people are saying over at myoscience.com. I'll put links below and you can use the code podcast to save. But let's further dive into this. I think this case
case of this individual, the acronym that they gave uh, him, his name is anonymous, is LM. And this is a case study. And there's been a lot of uh, case studies along these lines. But because there hasn't been a lot of randomized, blinded uh, clinical studies on this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, the case studies lead to observational studies that lead to clinical trials. So this is the first step in the scientific process. And Dave Feldman and others are really kick, kicking this off, which I think is great. So this individual at 21 years old, he had ulcerative colitis and was placed on um, mesalalamine and hydrocortisone and a lot of you know, drugs, biologics to treat uh, his ulcerative colitis. And it wasn't until he went on a ketogenic diet that he actually went into remission with his UC. UC is the acronym for ulcerative colitis. So this can be really problematic. People are having 10, 15 bowel movements a day and you know they get hemorrhoids and, and they get rashes on their anal sphincter. This can be really problematic for folks, right? So that's why uh, oftentimes these people are, are on steroids and biologics for life, which have consequences, suppressing the immune system, uh, leading to weight gain and the like. So this individual said, look, I'm gonna try a ketogenic diet and removing a lot of the fermentable uh, carbohydrates and fiber from the diet. And he experienced immense benefit and remission from his ulcerative colitis. However, he noticed significant changes in his LDL cholesterol. His LDL cholesterol went from 95 milligrams per deciliter over to 321 milligrams per deciliter. Obviously, his doctor is going to freak out. However, his triglycerides decreased, and they went all the way down to 49 milligrams per DL, which, by the way, is really low. Anything under 60 fasting is phenomenal, while his HDL cholesterol increased to 109 milligrams per DL. So as we talked about the cut points, that is the threshold to characterize this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, he exceeded that, right? His LDL cholesterol was over 200, his triglycerides decreased and his HDL increased over 80. So he fits into this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, which is why it is important to look at his coronary computed tomography angiogram known as a CCTA. So this is a coronary CT scan that looks at both the soft and hard plaque of the coronary arteries. And as the paper goes into and they talk about, there was a lot of finagling with his primary health provider. The provider was like, I think at 23, you should go on a statin. Now, needless to say, there are unintended harms of going on a statin. Mental health issues, there's muscle challenges, erectile issues, uh, diabetes even. There are, you know, it's not benign. Statin drugs are not benign. You're inhibiting a key process you know, in, in the, the biosynthesis of cholesterol that also has downstream effects in reducing coenzyme Q10. And that's why there's sports performance issues. There's blood sugar regulation challenges and much more. So the individual was able to tell his primary care doctor, hey, look, can we at least do advanced imaging on my heart to see if I am at risk for cardiovascular disease? Because his father had cardiovascular disease. And it turns out that he has zero calcified and non-calcified soft plaque, even though his LDL cholesterol is 321 and his, he has a high LP little a. And so why might this be? Well, his body composition improved on this diet. His ulcerative colitis, which was a chronic condition that was not treated with, not effectively managed with just medications, which needless to say, had a lot of health consequences. Again, biologics and steroids are problematic. So he improved his overall health and well-being, lost body fat. Uh, but yeah, his, his LDL cholesterol went up. And so but he was able to prove to his doctor that that was not causing increased calcification, um, both soft plaque and hard plaque uh, in his uh, vasculature system, which is why this case report is so unique. Because in the context of low body fat, high LDL cholesterol, high HDL and low triglycerides, there was not an in increase in calcification of the arteries. So this particular study, and then this one by David Diamond and Jeff Folick, titled Low Carbohydrate Diets, are concerns with saturated fats, lipids, and, and cardiovascular disease justified? They go into a similar narrative about how in the context of a low-carb diet, the increase in LDL cholesterol is associated with energy redistribution throughout the body and reliance on fats for fuel, not so much carbohydrates. And so this rise in LDL cholesterol is not necessarily directly atherogenic. And that's why it requires more of a nuanced clinical approach, looking at other risk factors, inflammatory biomarkers, and HDL and LDL subfractionation in the lipids. And so I think that's really important. It's important to recognize, and I'll share with you both of those particular papers in the show notes. But this recently published paper, I think, is just phenomenal. And I think it, it highlights a hitherto under-recognized aspect of cardiovascular disease prevention, and that is that ketones might be directly cardioprotective. And so the title of this paper is Fasting Ketoneuria is Inversely Associated with Coronary Artery Calcification in Non-Diabetic Individuals. This was recently published, and again, it highlights how ketones may be cardioprotective. And so in the context of, say, a lean 
mass hyperresponder phenotype where LDL cholesterol is increased as well as there's an increase in HDL cholesterol and reductions in triglycerides that you would probably suspect using outdated models of thinking that that would be damaging to the cardiovascular system. But new evidence suggests that ketones are protective for the heart. And this was a study involving 144,000 subjects and 12 of which had coronary artery calcium scores uh, greater than zero at baseline. And so essentially what they found is higher fasting levels of ketones in the urine was associated with decreased prevalence of coronary artery calcification. And I think that is important to recognize. And in conclusion, they say, we found an inverse association between fasting levels of ketone in the, in the urine and subclinical coronary artery uh, atherosclerosis. And, and this is both in the prevalence and progression of that disease. And that there may be potentially protective roles of increased ketone body formation in cardiovascular disease prevention. And this requires further investigation. So we know that the heart is a complex system interacting with all sorts of gut bacterial derived metabolites with lipid levels, with inflammatory biomarkers, with microbes, right? This is a very complex system. So to think that the sole, you know, the sine qua non of cardiovascular disease is LDL cholesterol elevations is a little bit myopic. And there's more and more evidence suggests, suggesting that ketones are protective. And that might be why some of these individuals like LM in that case study of the lean mass hyperresponder uh, is experiencing zero coronary artery calcification, even though his LDL cholesterol is through the roof, 321. Uh, and I've seen clients where their LDL cholesterol and they are super lean, super healthy, very physically fit. Their LDL cholesterols have been in the 400 range, uh, definitely exhibiting this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype. So I, I just want to share this information with you. So you have research at your fingertips. So if you fall into this category, you can print out these papers and go to your doctor and say, look, this is what the evidence is suggesting. I, I think, you know, we should do imaging, right? Maybe a CCTA, or we should look at coronary artery uh, calcium scores, or uh, also look at um, body composition analysis and, and look at all these things and, and start to create a, a more nuanced conversation about whether or not that high LDL cholesterol uh, is going to damage your cardiovascular system. So Hopefully you found this helpful and have a little bit more confidence when it comes to conversating with your primary health provider, who again, may be bought into the sort of outdated diet heart hypothesis that was developed really in the 1960s by an individual who had a strong bias against dietary fat, who it turns out might be being paid by the sugar industry and the like. And so I think it's important to recognize that these ideas take a long time to change clinical practice in medicine. Uh, and there's a lot of biases here and it's important that, um, you know, we follow the science and look at the new new data. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, if you did, you can hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road.